we are to survive as a nation of laws and democracy, this can never happen again. We're at a moment of maximum danger for our republic. Callous, inhuman, inexcusable, and dangerous. It was a power play to win at all costs with no regard for the will of the American people. Those are just some of the members of the January 6th committee describing the importance of their investigation. It's imperative, their words, not ours. And today, they will release their final report. We're still waiting for it. For months, we've seen countless hours of coverage on most major networks. It's the biggest piece of news. That is, unless there's actual news. Think about it. The press only cared about January 6th stories when there wasn't anything else to cover, which tells you they didn't actually care as much as journalists are just lazy. The committee delayed a blockbuster hearing when Hurricane Ian hit. They delayed the release of their final report yesterday because the Ukrainian president was in town. Then again, they are releasing some of the most interesting stuff of the entire investigation today, the Thursday before Christmas, during a nationwide blizzard. Why is that? Among the bombshells today, new Alyssa Farah Griffin worked as a back channel to the January 6th committee for Cassidy Hutchinson ahead of her bombshell testimony. Alyssa Farah also served as a commentator on CNN during the hearings and casually left some of those salient details out. That piece on Mediaite was written by Sarah Rump, contributing editor for the site, America's premier website for the news about the news. Sarah, good to see you. Uh, is there sort of a little bit of, uh, I don't know, playing both sides here? I mean, I, I can kind of sympathize with the committee because the, the situation with President Zelensky's visit, obviously, I can't even begin to imagine the security concerns that go into having to arrange travel for a man who is literally Putin's number one target. Um, so in that sense, delaying the scheduling was the right move. Um, I saw a news clip earlier where a reporter caught Representative Jamie Raskin in the hallway and he acknowledged that they had a, a skeleton staff this week because they were letting a lot of people go home for the holidays, especially their staffers that have to travel longer distances. Um, you know, delaying a day for this one report was the right thing. Um, as somebody who's followed all these hearings, um, not just out of professional interest, but because I've been personally interested in them, the delays have been frustrating. I've wanted them to go ahead, get to the point <laughs> for quite wait, a wait, while wait, now. I think, look, you, you, you cover... <laughs> You know, when you put something out on the Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday before Christmas that you want to totally bury, uh, which is what's happening yeah. with all these depositions, like the one that you found. And, and to be fair, there's there's things on the other side about uh, pe people who are loyal to President Trump trying to pressure uh, witnesses not to be fully candid and tell their full story. I don't think anybody's really surprised that Trump folks would do that. But but still, <laughs> for a report that was supposed to be so important and so imperative for the for the fate of our democracy. Uh, to then give staff off a, a week early because you want everybody to get home, how do they, how do you marry those two things? You know, honestly, um, I'm, I'm worrying that they're starting to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, and I, I've done this as a writer myself. You a a agonize and agonize and agonize over how you're going to phrase something, and it ends up taking 10 times longer, and it would have been better if you got it out sooner. The, the bit that I found in, in Cassidy Hutchinson's September, 20, uh, September 14th transcript about how she used Alyssa Farrah Griffin as a back channel, that was an instrumental piece of news because at the time, as Hutchison testified, she was being pressured by her attorney to be less than forthcoming, to say she didn't recall when she did recall. And after she spoke with, um, with Griffin, she's the one who called Representative Liz Cheney, gave her that info, told the committee what they should ask Hutchinson, and then they called her back in for another interview. This is absolutely critical in understanding how all this unfolded and, and yeah, the pressure uh, campaign. So, and yeah, and, that, and, and that, that just came out this week? That's well, insane. Right. But at the same time, the committee had all of this stuff. They could have released it a long time ago and they chose to yeah. sit on it. They chose to sit on it because they were more interested in controlling the narrative than putting all the information they had out and letting the world sort of sift through themselves to see what was important. At the same time, you know, you cover the media. Um, the fact that Alyssa would be on CNN talking about these things and not disclose, hey, by the way, I'm involved in talking to the committee and telling them what to ask. I don't know how that goes over very well. Well, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right that the committee could have put this out earlier. That interview was from September 14th. They've known this. For, for Griffin's side, 
I don't know that she knew for sure what Hutchinson had testified to because her testimony takes place after the conversation. And Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.